Characters are really something I look at when it comes to any media. If something doesn't have good characters, I more than likely won't have any encouragement to look at a series in a good light. I won't say I do huge in-depth character studies on every character I find to be the least bit interesting, but I will look at characters with a mind that'll pick out pros and cons of those said characters. Which is why when I saw another countdown released recently of the same caliber as the one you're watching today, I was greatly disappointed. Not because they didn't look at a character with a more critical mindset, but because they didn't understand what most of the character's purposes were. Don't get me wrong, I didn't hate the list overall, I felt it was mediocre at worst, but that aside, I saw a comment in the comment section of said video, and... Challenge accepted. So, I guess some ground rules are gonna have to be laid down, as I feel as if I don't, I may have a few issues myself. For starters, if I'm supposed to hate a character, I feel like it's best if I don't add it to this list, despite the fact that I may very well hate them in the end anyway. I mean, it shows they're doing their job right. So there probably won't be any villains on this list. Not because you can't hate a villain, most of them are supposed to not be like though, so... They might not show up, but no promises. I'll also have the rules as before. One per franchise, and I have to have played the games in order to dislike the characters. Anyway, there's not much more to say on that matter. We've got a lot of characters on this list. Let's dive in. Let me go ahead and bite the pillow, because we're starting with something that every time I talk about it, I get put on full blast with people telling me how misinformed I am. Pokemon! Alright, put down your immediate responses. I think I'm on the same page with everyone when I say X and Y was really mediocre. I mean, I like the Pokemon that came out of this generation despite how small it was, and I overall enjoy the idea of a European Pokemon generation, but outside of that, I greatly dislike the Mega Evolutions, Team Flare was underwhelming beyond everything, the fairy type broke the way we battle, and what was with those characters that you meet up in this game? The ones that were presumably your rivals, but only have a handful of actual uses in the game and that are barely noteworthy in the slightest. I can at least give Callum and Serena credit depending whom you choose, because at least they will battle you and treat you like a rival. I can give Tierno credit because while he did practically nothing, he at least got you started on your journey by leading you to the professor. And I can at least give Trevor credit because he at least gives you your Pokedex. Shauna was kinda just there. You only battle her twice, once at the beginning and once toward the end of the game when you obtain Waterfall, and does really nothing else. Her dialogues amount to empty you-can-do-it speeches and talking about how she wants to catch every Pokemon without really showing anything for it. She's pointless, boring, and flat as a character. Blech. I won't lie when I say I don't have too many controversial picks for this list, or at least I don't think I do. That said, Jack from the Jack and Daxter series comes off to me like a really bland, almost one-note character being a brooding character done wrong, angry at the world and everyone in it. I mean, to be fair, they were experimenting on him in the second game, and also to be fair, Jack 2 is the most that I've played of the series, so I can fully admit that maybe I just need to play more of the series. That said, I still greatly dislike what I've seen from Jack as a character, because holy crap is he just absolutely boring. Going through the game of Jack 2, he feels absolutely stagnant as a character, not fully developing past the I'm going to kill Praxis stage. And throughout I wonder if I was playing a hero, an anti-hero, or just a salty dick that I can't find any redeemable qualities of. I don't really get the praise of this character myself, but there's gotta be something that kept people coming back to the series and justify six games in an HD collection. And whatever it may be, I guess it's respectable, I just don't personally see it myself. To me, Jack is just that character, you know? A nearly silent protagonist that isn't supposed to have much emotion behind them so the player can play a blank slate that they can put themselves behind. And that'd be fine on its own if it wasn't for the fact that I know he's not supposed to be that kind of character, so it just comes off as bad character design if nothing else. Now that that's off my chest, let the crucifixion begin as I continue going through my list. Trust me, it's only gonna get worse from here. So during the Steam Summer Sale, I picked up Ukulele, and overall, I'm quite enjoying the new feeling of nostalgia it gives, and just overall, I think it's a good game that controls pretty well on its own. There are a few complaints about the game that I could bring up, but I'm working on something where I can talk about those later down the line, so I won't quite touch on them here. Overall, the characters in Ukulele are mostly one-offs, but you do have quite the handful that return at every level. From your mumbo-jumbo, to a minecart that just wants to ride again, to uh... Ugh this fucker. Rickshaw's character is supposed to be that of an innocent child who doesn't know any better and never fully grew up. That... that could be totally fine. If I didn't feel it was done in a way that makes me look at this character and think, what the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated at the top of my class in the- He's kind of like that bratty little brother that you see in cartoons. He's supposed to come off as something lovable and even sympathetic to an extent, but the end result is kind of obnoxious and you just want to avoid talking to him as much as you can, despite the fact that he gives you an upwards to 10 pages in the game total. It doesn't help that his minigames are either piss easy or annoyingly tedious either. Point is, the guy has yet to grow on me and until he does, he earns a spot here because I don't like him, plain and simple. 
You know, with the exception of like, three characters, I honestly can't say I remember all that many names from Skyrim. I mean, the world is as big as it is with almost every character having their own name and almost mannequin-like personality, so can you really blame me? I think it's kind of a good thing that I can even point out three from the Ludicrous lineup. Those characters are Shea Gorath, who is an amazing character whose insanity is charming and interesting, Lydia, who despite popular belief isn't the worst thing in that game, and Heimsker, who made a spot on this list. I will pick on the street preacher, are you kidding me? The guy's an in-your-face womanizing nutbag who's not at all written charismatically for me to enjoy him as a character. He's poisoned our water supply, burned our crops, and delivered a plague onto our houses. Not really, but are we gonna wait around until he does? Nah, but all joking aside, I always just kinda saw him as an annoying, kind of a disinteresting character. I'm honestly kinda surprised he stood out as much as he does to me. I can't tell you very much about the character either. He spreads the word of Talos, he acts like waitresses can't do things, like... Really, that's it. The developers tried really hard to make this guy stand out given where he's at and how much his story progresses depending on how the Battle of Whiterun turns out, which just makes the end result that much more for me to dislike. Okay, now we're getting into characters I personally think legitimately fail and not just characters I think aren't as good as they could have been. And what a better way to start than with a character from a fighting game, which is a genre that plays off a lot of its characters. I can't think of a better one. So let's talk Dead or Alive, and more importantly, a character called Zack. What does this character really do outside of beach volleyball? I guess he once saved Helena from committing suicide, and that's noble for sure, but outside of that, what is his motivation for being in this series? Money. Just money. And not even money used for anything in particular, just for him to fund his luxury lifestyle. I'm sorry, but as far as character motivations go, that's like the laziest you can get and makes even less sense for a character who's not even seen as a villain and seen as a character who tends to be fun-loving and caring. It makes no sense for his character to be built around a really well-caring, kind man who's never out to disappoint to be a character solely driven on money. It's contradictory in a way, and I feel like that doesn't make a good character. He has a lot of potential to be a good character, but the more I think about it, the more I come to the conclusion he just really isn't as far as I'm concerned. So Donkey Kong is a game full of characters that are likable in their own right. Hell, even characters that are not supposed to be likable, like King K. Rool, hold a special place in many people's minds. Mine included. It's hard for me to hate or even dislike many of the characters in the Donkey Kong franchises. I can point out several aspects about these characters that I enjoy. And then there's you. Hello, Candy Kong. What are you doing here? I think that's a very accurate question to ask Candy just in general. What are you doing here? Like, what is Candy Kong, really? She distracted K. Rule in 64. She has a music motif, which I guess is a trait that I can get behind. But outside of that, what is her character? Girl? Woman? Female monkey person? She's a token of a series that needs no tokens, really, and doesn't have much else to her as far as character goes. She doesn't do much in any game she's in, just what's her purpose? I can't really make a read on this character, and while I think that's supposed to be the point, it's a really bad point to build a character off of that's supposed to be Donkey Kong's love interest. I don't know, maybe that's just me though, it's something that has kind of always bugged me about Candy Kong. So what kind of a dual countdown would this be if I didn't talk about at least one game I grew up with that no one gives a fuck about in the end? Come on, be honest, what kind? Crazy Machines is a puzzle game, one that tries desperately to match logic and gravity to the best of its abilities. I like it, it's calming. Pretty calming. Even diving into the story mode, I don't really hate the experience despite how sometimes I know how to do a puzzle only for it to not succeed. While that on its own could be an entirely separate thing I can complain about in a future video, the rest of the game is fine. A little safe but fine. In story mode, you play the role of an up-and-coming scientist, an apprentice of sorts to this faggot, who, as the game would suggest, puts you into a position where you have to fix his broken machines or find a lazy way out of cleaning up some mess he's made. Which on its own would be alright if he didn't take the credit for everything. Yeah, that doesn't fucking undermine your apprentice or anything. You know, maybe it's the fucking mayor I hate, I don't know. Hey, I never said characters on this list necessarily had to actually be written for me to not like them. Simple personality traits can do stuff all on their own, and a crazy professor can suck it. I don't think people give League of Legends as an in-depth game nearly enough credit. The champions in this game have some surprisingly in-depth lore that really helps you understand the champions you control better. You learn their intrigues, their motifs for joining the league, their upbringing, and goddamn, some of them can be real tearjerkers. Now, with that brought up, 
what the fuck is Vel'Koz? Not only is he a champion I quite rarely ever see get used, he's not even that great of a character being that his lore surrounds learning a plane of existence he knows nothing about. Sweet, okay, we got a computer with less character and less personality than actual computers. I'm supposed to see this character as well written? Interesting, like they had a whole revamp of some champions done for the release of this guy, remember this. He was supposed to be an important champion to the whole lore of League of Legends. But what did we get? Quite literally a floating eyeball with tentacles that should stand out as a character more than he actually does. When it comes to lore and champion revamps, I admittedly haven't been that big of a fan of them. Like, at all. But in all actuality, anything is better than the Vel'Koz that we have now. So remember when I said I avoid characters who you're supposed to hate? I lied. Bobby Zilch is a reprehensible piece of filth that doesn't have a likable bone in his body as he kind of just shits on Rasputin for being the new kid. He's got no other traits than to be the schoolyard bully and honestly that's kind of pathetic coming from the main villain. Or rather who you're led to believe is the main villain because lord knows he doesn't actually do anything in the game. Oh cool, he's a plot twist that misleads you into a false sense of security. Heh, <laughs> no. He's a side character who you fight and becomes your friend in the middle of the game. That'd be too much credit. Is he at the very least a henchman for the main villain who's unlikable on the basis that he's evil? Not on your life. Bobby's just a douche. An irrelevant douche who could have been taken out of the game entirely with nothing lost. He's not even a good kind of douche either. Because while I found him to be completely unlikable, at the end of the day he doesn't give me any reason to care, only having like two or three interactions with Rasputin total before disappearing from the game altogether. Well, fuck, were we supposed to hate this character or just brush him off as a minor annoyance that wouldn't last? I know it's the former, but the latter just wound up being what he was. What a waste, honestly. Everyone has that one character they hate for reasons they can even admit is probably really petty, right? Like, come on, we all have that one. Or two. Several on this list have been those, but seriously, fuck Mr. Aziz, he can fall into a pier straight into a volcano for all I care. <clears throat> Excuse me, that little outburst was not needed. Oh, Doodle, are you copying out and putting a character from a licensed video game on this list? That I totally am, but consider the following. Mr. Aziz knows you're Spooderman. Like, seriously, how else would he expect you to deliver pizzas to window washers in New York City in two minutes and then yell at you for being late if you're even a fraction of a second late? Holy hot damn, I dislike this guy's minigames and this guy's character. Yes, this guy does have a character, being an inconsiderate borderline slave driver practically treating Parker like Parker upset Massa too off color for you guys. <laughs> Fuck, that one was unintentional. Point is, this guy's a dick, plain and simple. And considering he's an optional character, he doesn't even have the defense of plot convenience. Screw this minigame and screw this character. And I almost promised myself I wasn't gonna do non-serious entries. I don't like spiders. I can never tell which are poisonous, which ones just bite, or which ones are totally harmless and just eat other pests in the house. On top of the fact that they're everywhere and there's literally no way around that fact, I worry about them a lot more than I do snakes. I hate spiders in video games too. Video game developers know just how to make an arachnophobe's worst nightmare feel... justified. That said, if they make me shiver and want to avoid them at all costs because I fear what damage they can cause, my god is that a good sign. Now let's get into why Undertale's spider both sucks as a spider and as a character and by far the weirdest entry on this list if on the off chance you watch my other content. Look, I get it. Muffet was a fan design placed into the game via Kickstarter. Fine, I have no inherent issues with that. The problem arises though that nothing was actually really done with her. You get a spider donut at the beginning of the game and you can and should save it to her boss fight unless you want the most infuriating fight I have ever faced in this game. She comes in asking for a ludicrous amount of money for extra donuts and then comes in to fight you before fucking right off or being killed. Either works. It's basically an instance of, I get why you're here and I think it's cool that you're here, but as a character you're kinda needless. Considering she's one note, has no real relevance to the plot, and is barely any dialogue or actions that allow you to learn what kind of a character she is. And yes, it is weird I use her as a commentary avatar sometimes. I'm glad I'm not the only one. You know what? There's a lot of really interesting characters in fighting games. And you know what else? Skullgirls is one of those games. A lot of interesting characters with interesting stories facing other interesting characters with interesting stories in a fight to become an interesting all-powerful thing with interesting consequences. Except Sarah Bella. She's not under this category. Hoo boy. Alright, hear me out. I won't say Sarah Bella is objectively bad. 
She's at least got character, personality, and a reason to exist. But with her personality, it's pretty bare bones, being kind of bland with her just being the kind of upbeat performer type that doesn't really have any traits that make her stand out as a performer type. I guess I'm not saying she has to be an over-the-top stereotype to stick out, but I don't get the kind of vibe she's trying to give off from the personality she gives. Her backstory is quite honestly summarized in two sentences, being that she's a performer who had her hat vice versa presumably passed down to her, and her purpose is kind of lackluster at best given that she's only out to get the skull heart to win the heart of a man. In a game where people are out to collect the skull heart to attempt to free themselves from everlasting turmoil to prevent their families from being affected by future events, and to see their only childhood friend from being eternally possessed, it really puts into perspective how weak Cerebella is in comparison to the rest of the cast of Skullgirls. Ah oh well though, one out of the twelve. Whatever. Look, I don't hate Kingdom Hearts. In fact, I'm hyped for Kingdom Hearts 3. But both of the times that I've mentioned it in the countdown has not been positive. I will need to change that in the future. Top 10 Kingdom Hearts worlds, anyone? Alright, yeah, the games are ones that I can enjoy, but dear lord, are there some massive faults in the games that really leave bad tastes in my mouth. Some of the bosses are ludicrous, some of the levels aren't very well put together, several challenges piss me right the fuck off, and if they could not kill my joy, that would be great. And some of the characters are bland beyond everything. I swear I like this series. Phoenix, as a Kingdom Hearts character, you're easily my least favorite of the bunch, which aggravates me not only because you are music-centered, but because you're a fucking waterbender. Why are you not a better character? Demix suffers from what I call the wrong attitude syndrome. Look, as much as it annoys me, it's fine he's a coward. As much as I think he does it incorrectly, his casual attribute in a line of very professional attributed nobodies is a welcome standout alongside a couple others. But instead of focusing on those aspects to make him a potentially amazing comic relief in the organization, they focus on the character's laziness attribute to play for jokes. Look, your competition is Axel and Larkseen. Axel plays the casual role a lot better and Larkseen is better at comic relief, using her sarcastic attitude as a way to shoot off witty remarks at whomever crosses her path. You, sir, need to pick up the pace in the third game, because even as a nobody, I have less reason to care for you than I should, and that's saying something. Sometimes you just gotta go with the flow, I guess. Sometimes the obvious answer is the correct one. Be it a character the majority of fans see as annoying to a character widely seen as bland beyond belief. We all have those times where our answer is the obvious one, and Spyro has an obvious one for me. Money bags. We all know what the annoyances with money bags are. He's one notely greedy, totally superfluous to every game he's in, and just becomes a hindrance and an annoyance to equally Spyro and the player. He charges your collectibles to progress, becomes completely obnoxious in Year of the Dragon as what amounts to a pretty useless henchman for the sorceress in that he frees your companions for those gems you spend time collecting anyway, so even as a villain he's very weak and fairly pathetic. And as a character, he's very bland in that, well, given his name is Moneybags, his personality surrounds greed and not much else. Hooray, we have what amounts to the embodiment of flanderization of a character that was never even established as anything else. Am I supposed to think this guy is an okay character? Because I don't. Oh boy, Legend of Zelda. We all know my opinion about this series by now, don't we? The Legend of Zelda doesn't have the absolute worst cast of characters. There's some characters I could genuinely say that I enjoy, and then there are those that I have the unpopular opinion with and say that I outright dislike. And of course, we can all relate. I'm sure we all have those characters, do we not? Mm-hmm. Thought so. Moving on. So, we may not all collectively agree on what characters or dungeons or even bosses we like and dislike. Hell, a lot of people can't even agree on items being good or bad. But is it possible to get everyone to agree that Kepper Gabra is the most pointless character ever? Honestly, he's part of the reason I have a hard time calling Ocarina of Time even close to the best Zelda game, despite what the game did for gaming as a whole. He's only really there to slow an already slow game down, and it bothers me to no end. Ugh, he just rehashes the same shit that you heard five seconds ago and doesn't even put it in a new way where you learn anything new from it. He's just a bother that stops your play and you just want him to go away. Though the designers thought it would be funny to have him ask you if you want him to repeat his repetitious non-information. Kindly go screw off, Nintendo. This has been Doodle Tones, and I've just demonstrated how spiteful I am when it comes to people saying I'd like to see you do better. I'll see you next time, and have a good one.